Okay, this is a video for my five favorite earphones that are $300 or below. I think they're all excellent. They're different from each other. None of them are redundant. They all have a reason or a purpose to possibly be in your library. While we're on this, this is my channel that's not yours, so you probably see something that says subscribe. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you can. I'd appreciate that. And then notifications, though I don't really do that for other people, but I do subscribe. So if you can subscribe, that'd be dope. Thank you in advance very much. Let me go ahead and close this down. Tantium Oxygen. That's the first one we're going to go ahead and take a look at. Tantium Oxygen is, is the, none of these are being hyped because they're not new except the Timeless. Tantium Oxygen has been around for about two to three years. It is, in my opinion, the best dynamic driver in the business. I think that it's better than the IE 900 and I think it's better than the Illumination. I mentioned those two because those are my favorite and highest listed. This is going to be relisted because I now use SpinFit CP100s for all of my earphones and uh, that works out. So I got no problem with this, but you do need to be aware that the biggest point to be considering is not the size of the shell, it's not the tuning because that's very pleasant, it's the nozzle. This is what the tuning looks like. Let me go ahead and see if I can get a better color for you there. This is brilliant absolutely brilliant i'm disappointed with the prism because it's six hundred dollars not because of the sound because they have one called the oxygen 2 that i think is a little bit better and it's half the price but i'll get into that when i do the actual video what does this do well pretty much everything does it have weak points it's got the nozzle that's kind of short and this isn't a base beast this isn't something this is going to be something like the starfield by moondrop if you're familiar with that BCDFG, HJKLM, Moondrop, Starfield. Let me throw that up. That looks really close. I have not seen those before. It's a little bit different, but this could be when I did the measurement actually, but this is really very, very similar. The Starfield has a thing about lack of authority in the base, and that's pretty much the community. Even people that are big Moondrop fans will say, yeah, it's not its strong point. The same would be said for the Oxygen O2. If it's got a weak point, it's that. It doesn't slam. Like some sets that are much more affordable, more expensive, but it's accurate. It's high fidelity, it's faithful reproduction, um, and it's the tonality and timber are just absolutely fantastic. It plays back my library very well. It does the bass set here good. It does the bass guitar. Sweetleaf very well. Does all, everything in my library, vocals in particular, really excel on the O2. It's a great set and for its price, it's an easy wreck with the understanding that it's got a nozzle that's short. Everything else will fit right in your ear because it's a very small set. It's right there. There will be a video at the end of this video to take a look at if you want to see this stuff up close. Just be aware that this can be fixed with whatever tips you usually use for stuff that you want to sit inside. It's not heavy. It's not going to fall out of your ear because of weight. It's got none of those issues. Just the tip. Sound quality is absolutely fantastic. That's one. Next one is actually not... This is the next one. This is the Manger T and this is a 6BA 1DD and it's got a very different tuning from the set that we're looking at. Like I said, none of these are suffering from same face syndrome. It's got much less everything though on to the ear it only sounds audible maybe in this region right here which is upper mid to treble crossover but for my library music library listening level this guy is 77 measured off of 440 hertz uh tone and then i do my evaluations on adi 2 deck so always listen at the same level do people listen to the same library what is their listening level their age and their hearing loss or lack of it is it and also usage a person that uses for 45 minutes on the train to go to university or go to work and then on the way back and then they use headphones at home they're using earphones in a different way than someone that sits and listens to earphones for several hours in a day and they can totally see the same set completely different just because of that forget about library forget about listening level the amount of time they listen will draw in fatigue for one set whereas another person will look at that and say I don't get that at all and the topic of how they use it never really comes up length of listen time is really important the manger T is great for long listening it's not lacking in quality that makes that so it's just doesn't have the upper harmonics that might fatigue some people but it doesn't have it this is one of those sets that a pro would be appropriate. The, that, that, this pro, that pro, all kinds of sets that have pro versions that I have no idea why they do that. This would be a set that a couple tweaks would make it 
go from underground king with lots of sales to uh i guess it doesn't need it to be honest with you talking about the financials and the business side of it i think they're doing fine but a pro version i would go for that so that's the mango tea close that out next set is the timeless and this is a planar set that's 14.2 millimeter um, it fits me fine. People have taken pictures of it because that's a concern based on its shape. Let me go ahead and take a look at it really quick. Take this out. Put 7 Hertz Timeless. This is notable because it's one of the first planners to come out, including the Odyssey, which was three and a half years ago, that's not totally wrecked as it comes out the box. So you can actually put this in here and listen to it. I think it's fantastic. I think it resolves stuff like the bass pulls and releases on Black Sabbath, which is really hard for a lot of sets to do well. Nothing touches the P1 in this when it comes to the ability to perceive the whole thing. The pull, the release, the resonant decay of that n string, and then the other one that's coming in multiple pulls per second in that solo. This set can resolve that like a beast. And then the experience of having planar in your life because you don't have one would be another reason to get it. On top of the fact that it's $219. In the world and the time of stupid prices for stupid returns, this is absolutely a good investment, in my opinion. I would wreck that you check out other reviews on this person's library, listening at my level, 77 dB, and listening for long term. This is a fantastic set. I love it very much. Pros, price, sound quality, everything, cons, um, new to the market, and need more feedback from buyers. Get that take that out. Next would be the Audio Lokahi. I thought this was discontinued. This is how plugged in I am to Linsol. This is a set that is um, amazing for what it does. It's got true extension going all the way off. It's got, I really do love this set. This has, uh, this is the perfect example of mm, dynamic driver compensation given to a BA because a BA doesn't sound like a dynamic driver, but with some boost and help, it can sound like it. And this set actually does. This is seven balanced armatures inside. It's made by a DIY person. And in the bass department, it's not lacking at all. And this elevation in the mid bass as it gets to the mids can be really dangerous for dynamic drivers that aren't done right. But this set does it perfectly. So you get a simulated DD type impact. So you don't feel like, damn, that. I wish that I, that I had a dynamic driver in it. Most people don't think that. They maybe think it's a little bit too intense, or they think that the quality of the timber is not quite... I think for its price, it's absolutely beast. And if you fall in love with something like this, your next step would be something like the U12T, if you think that this is excellent, because this is a baby version of what that fully formed U12T becomes. This has got good extension, actually better than that set. It's got good timber, and it's got bass that is not obviously BA, which is, again, like the U12T. And it fits like a champ. It's got a suction issue to be aware of. At 239 again, all of these sets are under $300. Uh, yes, yes, recommend them. Easy to rec. Let me count this out now. Last one's going to be a Sony. You know, help me out, Sony. What You put dB here and then hertz, and I don't have any scale right here. Is this 2 kilohertz? Is this where the Sony BA is crossing over? This is a set that... Let me take this out and put the Sony in 3AP. This is the only non chi fi So I put this up today. If you've checked my squig link before, you maybe thought, I thought he had that. There's a lot of sets I haven't put up yet. I never put this up and had this stretched out and scaled like it does on squig link, and this is really close to my target. The N3AP is not... If you've ever heard this, the Neo by 64 Audio, this is like that. It's not high res. It doesn't have every edge of every note, but it's very warm, comfortable. It resolves enough to not feel like you listen to something in lo-fi. Um, it's not overwhelming in its intensity that's going to fatigue you. It really, really is an underrated set in my circles. I don't see people talk about N3 AP enough, considering it's... Uh, it's under three hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars roughly, maybe even less than that. One ninety nine sometimes, depending. Most of these, are, the Oxygen O two is old, the N three AP is old, the Manger T is old. The only new set on here is the Seven Hertz Timeless, and it's a planar for two hundred something dollars. So I would recommend that you go ahead and grab that. Um, last thing that I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at is.
is the tribe one melee and this is the 715 comment section right down here my goal when I released this set was to put it into the consumer so I was asked about pre-order I said no um, I was said you want to send this out to viewers I said yeah sure um, you know critical Z Polt a few people that I mentioned in particular I, I said but I want to give it a good two weeks before anybody gets it I just want the public to get it unfortunately when you do that some of the public public is actually people that are very close to other companies and they do these hot takes and it's the way the hobby goes and you guys understand that so I don't need to explain it but getting it out to the public fast and letting them determine it is really going to be the best indicator if something's going to last or not. It's not going to be four reviews. If that were the case, the Mangard would have been dead and nobody would be buying it today, last week, last month. It got through that phase because it just sounds good. The Belon 03 was poo-pooed by a lot of people, but it got through that phase and it became popular because people said, yeah, for its price, yeah, you know, it, it, the cable sucks, the fit is, you know, hit and miss, but it's got something special to it. The people found what the reviewers often couldn't. And I wanted Melee, and I said this to somebody in a personal chat. We talked for two hours, and we have very different views. And you can see it executed in how we did our sets. I think that it's more important to get it into the public's hands because that's going to be where it lives or dies. And on this platform, which is mine, so of course it's going to be tilted towards me because people are buying it because they, they're fans of mine. There's also people that are not subscribers that are very happy with it. So you can peruse this as you like. Then there is Hi-Fi Guides where there's a lot of people. And Head 5 is not where you're going to find it. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in another video because it's fascinating how you can break down this hobby and predict what people are going to say about items before they get it. And you're making that prediction based partly on sound preference, on alignment with companies, and their feeling towards the people that said that thing is good already. It's very, very, I got the word from looking at this thumbnail, disturbing. It's a good word to put towards it. The hobby is what it is. The best thing you can do is build up a history based on music that speaks to you and the past wrecks that seem to hit or if they don't, you know why and look back and say, yeah, that was kind of spoken out. These sets are all sets that, based on my library, and definitely because of their price, are easy for me to recommend. The, the Oxygen O2, the Mangard T, the Timeless by 7 Hertz, the Audio Lokahi, and the Sony N3AP. And just ignore the Melee on the far right. Um, and that's it for today. Life happens. I'm not going to get into it anymore. Everybody's got their things going on. Uh, I've tried to get more active, especially after October 8th when stuff comes up. Um, stuff should be more clear, well, good or bad, and then I'll be able to proceed uh, with doing my videos for the channel. So guys, thank you guys for your patience. For everybody that bought the mailing, thank you very much for the trust. You liked it or not, I've seen people on Chai Fi Reviews and other places where they weren't fans of it, but they articulated it very clearly. They didn't say, I listened to this, and I said, I'm not liking it. Like they would broke it down. And I appreciate the effort and the money, number one, they spent to get the item. And then they took the time to say, it's all right. I'll tell you why I don't like it. And then they explained it. Like, that's that's the way it goes, man. It's, as long as you're specific, because then someone else can come in and say, yeah, I disagree with that. Or I, I know what you're saying. Like that, That's helpful to the community overall, good or bad for the company, for me, for anybody else. When you don't like something, if you're specific and say, this album and this track at approximately 2 minute and 36 seconds does a bass guitar and I can't hear it as good as I can hear it on and then insert the other set. That's helpful. That's better than a lot of reviewers do. So thank you very much for your time that you put in to the Melee. This is the end of the video. I rambled longer than 10 minutes, didn't I? I did it again. I'm out. Uh, and a close-up video coming after this. And now I'm out. Okay, let's take a look at at these close up you probably already saw the video where you can't even see the IEMs and a lot of people get pissed off about that this is the Tance Chim Oxygen O2 in my opinion probably you see it's in a bonk I actually took the gold planar 4.4 with the 3.5 and slapped it on the oxygen this is the best dynamic driver you can get in the business price be damned I don't care about the IE900 illumination though those are awesome I think this is a better set you need tips to get a proper fit for under $300, it's an easy wreck. 
the pros of this is overall tuning and timber. The tonality is absolutely exceptional. The cons is the fit because of the short nozzle. And it is not, uh, it doesn't slam quite as hard as some people might want coming from a dynamic driver. It's accurate, it's got faithful reproduction, but it's not quite, it's not quite hammering. It might have something to do with the amount of the size of the cavity. I'm not quite sure. I don't find it to be lacking. I find it to be accurate. Again, high fidelity, faithful reproduction, audiophile, etc., etc. That would be one thing sonically that I would note. It's not a kicker. That's it. But it's the best DD overall. Um, better than the Illumination, which I love, and the IE900, which I love as well. IE900 is much more intense. Um, Short-term listening, like a 45-minute ride to university and back, that, that would be the IE900. Long-term listen, you're looking at it right here. And that is the Tantrum Oxygen O2. Next is the Mangard T. This is a 1DD 6BA set. You see it's on a big fat cable. I love this set a lot. This is a... At some point, it's got to go from underground king to being above ground because there's so many people that have bought it. There's some people that have had some issues with it. I'm not sure what's going on with that. If you want to comment under the video, I'll go ahead and maybe see if I can address that. That would be a shame, but there seems to be so many people out there that don't have issues that it might have been a batch. Um, that's something to consider, though. Ask around. I've never had an issue, and this is a... Uh, this is an MMCX version. I got this before they went crazy and started selling a bunch of them so this is what is the pros of this um it's a relaxed long-term listen without the obvious sacrifice of details like there's some things the sony n3ap for example you're subconsciously giving away some details for the overall pleasantness of the tonality the manger t doesn't really make you make that compromise it straddles the line of that though but it does that straddling very well hence its popularity it's got the detail it sounds very good um, I listen at 77 dB measured with a 440 hertz tone. I find this to be a fantastic set. It's the Manger T. Uh, I think it's priced right. If they ever make a pro version of this, I would think this is a set that you make a pro version of. Maybe give it a little more something, take the feedback. I think as it is, um, boss of its price range, close, pretty close. It's a hybrid. It's one of the better ones. And that's it for the Manger T. 7 Hertz Timeless. This is the newest member of the list. It's easy to put it on the list because it's $219. It's a planar. It's 14.2 millimeter. I don't know how much of that is effective area. It's got a different replay than the other sets on this list. It doesn't sound like a dynamic, obviously. It doesn't sound like a hybrid with balance time, which is taking care of half of the replay. Why is Focus so hard on this set? Um... A couple of people have said that that screen comes up, but they got replaceable, so they must know that that's an issue as people are trying to stuff this in their ears. This is a detail beast. The finger slides up strings on fretboards of guitars and all those little teeny subtle things that sometimes jump out at you because you're like, man, I haven't heard that. This is the type of set that will do that to you lots of times. You will have that experience lots of times with a set like this. Um, and that's the 7 hertz. It's, people are getting it right now, so pay attention to the feedback. Listen to the music being mentioned and the details. It's all in the details. That is the timeless. This is the Audio Lokahi. This is a 7BA set. It's got the elevated bass, which makes it sound like it's got a DD in it, or you don't really even think about it. In some BA sets, you do think about it immediately because there's a lack of impact with low frequency instruments like kick, kick, kick guitars, kick drums, and uh, bass guitars. And this doesn't really jump out at you like that. This might jump at you for other reasons. It doesn't have bad timber. It's actually quite a good set. It's got great extension. It's not like the other sets mentioned in this video. All of these are different, which is great about this list. Um, this is a set that you might have to wait for because it's made by a DIY person. There's some people that report like a suction issue. Um, so that's something to consider, which is usually with a BA, uh, dynamic driver set. But with this set, that seems to be a... I have no idea why. This is also MMCX, my version anyway. I believe that they're all MMCX. Audio Lokahi, wreck it. That's a close-up look at it. Sony N3AP. This is a classic right here. This is a predecessor to the Sony Z1R, which you think that's a crazy comparison. It's the concept of the driver firing straight out, the balanced armature being tube straight out, and they kind of did the same thing in a bigger steel version with another dynamic driver with the Z1R. This That same profile was kind of tested with the N3AP. It's got a very... It's a bass focus set, not bass 
headset, but it's leaning towards the base. It's warm. It's kind of like the 64 Audio Neo, but much more affordable than that. It's not a technical beast, but it's very pleasing in its tonality. It's got extension that goes all the way off the audible range. There's no fall off. You're not going to be lacking in something. It, it, it gives everything. It's not the most resolving set that there is. Um, but in its price range, it's very pleasing because a lot of people that have been buying this for years. So uh, this, the Lokahi, the O2, these are sets that have been around for a while, but I consider them to be the best in their price range. So that's the Sony N3AP. And that's the Melee because it's my channel. So I'll just put it there. Because I can. And I'm out. Coming from Queens.